Okay, so I used to work at the Woodward Bar and Grill. Y'all remember the Woodward Bar and Grill before it burnt down in 2021? There's a series of text messages of me reporting to my management about the drawer that I was responsible for. Uh, it was constantly, it was always short. And I constantly told Jeff about it, but it almost seemed like they all, they didn't know. They was doing it on purpose. I don't know what Harold was promising Jeff, but it obviously wasn't nothing professional. It was June 16th, my deceased brother, Courtney Meeks birthday, and Harold knew that. We all know Harold did his background search on me before I did mines on him, obviously, because he was stalking me. And that's all you can say was, that's crazy. And then Jeff waited several days to contact me back. Actually, he only contacted me because the police contacted him because I gave them the address and phone number of the establishment that you are supposed to be taken care of. Yeah, so the owner did not contact me um, until three days later, and that was because the police contacted him to let him know a police report was filed at his establishment. On these text messages, 620, um, I basically went off on because you're disrespecting me. You don't wait no damn three days later to contact somebody about somebody threatening them at a job, talking about some murder and jumping and beating people. You don't do that at Family Dollar CVS. Why you get to do it at the Woodward? And I called Harold a woman until he disrespected me. And at that point, he became exactly what a paper would put him in the prison cell as, as a man. Regardless of what you want to say, what was between his legs is the problem is what I had to say, what I had to say, that he's a man. The thing is, is that I would most definitely treat him like a man when you're disrespecting me like you don't have any sense. Jeff says he doesn't know Harold's real name. Somebody, if you see Jeff, please ask him, how can you have somebody working at your bar, Jeff? And you do not know their first, middle, last name, social security number, phone number, nothing. I mean, people stealing, IDs missing, credit cards who's coming missing. And you got somebody working behind there that has a bunch of felonies for stealing. And one was even for identity forgery. I said it before after I got drugged to BJ Roosters. I saw that somebody had my ID and they was walking around my social security number. I mean, this is pretty much, I mean, I said it the way it actually happened. I'm a very honest person. I brought up the fact that he was assaulted with a deadly weapon at Jeff's bar and Jeff did nothing about it. He told me that's none of my damn business. You can look at these text messages and you can see he was more upset and defending Harold over me. I didn't do nothing to no one. And basically, you can just tell that this was just all planned and plotted out. Like they hired me almost and knew they were going to do this to me. That's what it looks like. It looks like they kept doing it. Everywhere Herod go, then this would happen because then he got his ass up and went all the way down to Atlanta and did the same shit. So then I had to wait an additional three days again because Jeff was upset that the fact that I was upset about being threatened to be murdered. But he was so upset about me calling Harold exactly what he was, a man. Me being very famous and real and tangible with you all because you all know my first middle name and actually my birthday because I'm very proud of my first name and my middle Japanese name and my last name. So they thought that Harold had a one up on me and I didn't have his real name. I've been had here a real name. I was playing with Jeff to see what you're going to play me. And you did. You lied to me over and over again and said you didn't know his name. This is the bar owner. He gets online and attacks me. I ain't say nothing about it. It was extremely unprofessional, extremely childish. And honestly, I didn't like Jeff no more. And I stopped going to the Wubble Bar and you never see me in there. After June 2017, I never stepped foot back inside of Wubble Bar. I don't talk to DJ Tone because he hangs around a bunch of people that is associated with Harold. And because of my safety... I'm not that close with Tone at this moment. Maybe he forgot or something, but I will let you know this. When you're in that environment, you have to get along with people. I leave the environment and you guys see me on TV. I'm just going to be real with you all. There's a, a professional level. There's a certain level of professionalism that I seem to always bring into a room that the gay community seem like they never could understand where you're getting this from. You don't put your hands on nobody. You definitely don't threaten nobody and you definitely don't stalk nobody. And you definitely don't threaten a somebody. You definitely don't stalk a somebody. You definitely don't send a bunch of people to tell a somebody you are nobody. I'm using this big platform to share because I'm not the only person that had a problem with Harold Toriano Graves and his family. I'm pretty sure there's probably somebody that's listening to this is probably having a problem with his family at this moment right now. You can pause the video and you can read this um, false PPO. It wasn't me. I wasn't calling you and sending you, like a lot of this. I mean, it's just lies. You can read it. I mean, let's be real. We know what PPOs are about. It's because somebody's sexually attracted to you. That's what normally it starts from. If you really want to dissect it, it looks like he may have mental illness because you have three felonies for stealing and you went to the extreme to file a false 
Floss Police Support, you have to be crazy. So Hero gets involved with these bars and he pays them probably a lot of money to do illegal things to people. Because I've been treated for a very long time without justice. You guys can see that I've been bullied by this group. I would try to get a job as a bartender and there would be rumors that I couldn't count or I was stealing. And it came from the Woodward Bar. I used to work at BJ's and I mean, the owner hired me, but look at how he treats me. He literally liked me at one point. So I don't know what happened, but I would say once Harold got there, he said something. And the next thing I know, I came back to work and everybody at BJ Roosters hated me except for the customers because Mario and Jimmy couldn't get to the customers' heads. That's how I worked. I made my money from the customers. I didn't make my money from the people that worked at BJ Roosters who pushed those insidious rumors that I had a small penis. I'm black and I'm partially Asian. The Japanese middle name. I'm a median complected person and you can see the Asian ancestry in my face. And I'm pretty sure you saw it when I was working in that bar with that beautiful face that you hired. I felt like one of Rick France was going to hit me in the face with a Corona bottle with. And with my Asian middle name that no one know how to pronounce, you couldn't tell I was part Asian. The Asian bartender there that was spreading the rumors I had a little dick. What was that for? Because Harold told you to do it. So the gay community that I was attracted to transsexuals, he told the gay community that I had a little dick and he tried his best to make the gays not like me. Jimmy at the front door pushing the rumors from Mario because Mario's giving Jimmy the cocaine. Everyone knows this family is a huge coke dealing family. We all know a lot of these gays do cocaine and they don't want their cocaine messed with. So I'm not going to mess with that head coke head. Harold or Mario. Yeah, I don't do cocaine or anything like that, so I don't have nothing to worry about when it comes to that. But those who do drugs are afraid to speak up because they want to get their fix and not worry about if they're going to end up in a hospital because Harold fell out for some bad cocaine. So then I get online and I Google what was going on with me. Gang stalking is what comes up and I look up and it says it's not true. It is very true. true. There's people like Harold who work with the police that are crooked in law enforcement who obviously it looks like it was done on purpose. You don't miss all of that information and don't investigate it or think twice. So, I mean, I don't know, somebody apparently blew up or something, but they were sending me bomb emojis to my page and making bomb pages and everything. Just just making me feel completely uncomfortable. There was people all around my apartment. The, the, the soulless is talking about somebody is messing with the mailbox and everything. It was so much chaos going on in that damn building. I left and I didn't give a damn about that motherfucking eviction. Make fun of that eviction and I got all the paperwork say why I left that damn apartment and I left that apartment walking I left that apartment smiling I left that apartment on my way to the city girls flew out music video and what I did after that I took my ass to Tyler Perry Studios and I made you say wow George Charles Haggerty, I don't know where you are, but I want you to know that my voice is bigger and louder than yours and I want you to know that you have failed me you have failed me and you have sent me into a bunch of troubles because you were so lazy. You did not want to look at that paper again and file a request to put Harold in an investigation for perjury, for perjury and forgery and filing a false police report against somebody innocent. You didn't want to do that. There's so much evidence. We can all look over it over again of this judge took the text messages to the court. He didn't want to look at the text message. What kind of judge does that? He need to be disbarred yes. immediately. I just pointed out the fact that police support had a four day difference. He didn't want to acknowledge the four day difference. The judge. And Harold looked very uncomfortable and said it was circumstances, but he couldn't give a reason why he didn't have a real witness. Janice Misarahi lied with Harold and came to court with him. Why would you there, Janice Misarahi? He wasn't even there. Why were you at the courtroom? You shouldn't even been allowed to even come inside of the courtroom because you was not there. They told my witness, DJ Tone, immediately he had to leave. But they let Janice stay there for almost an hour. And then they left. They purposely disrespected the judge and did not follow instruction and took their ass out that damn courtroom. They sat there and was being disrespectful to the courtroom and me. Laughing and making remarks like, mm-hmm, after Hero said something. Judge Haggerty is just so funny. Everything's so funny. So DJ Tone was my witness. Um, My ex, Jeff. Your name is Jay Spratlin, or y'all may know him in Detroit as Sean. From Backstreet. He literally signed papers and served Harold and turned around and worked right next to him. He knew the felonies. He's, I was sending my ex-boyfriend, Jeff. You saw him at Backstreet. I was sending him everything I sent, da-da. So... And that's just sad. She's blocked. DJ Tone is blocked. I'm not associating with these people because of this. My ex Jeff, I mean the one named Sean that worked at Backstreet. So yeah. Being famous on social media in 2019, I look myself up and I see this. All these fake pages. One saying James Larkin and Kayla Meeks has something in common. And I'm 
supposedly blow, blow up and turn into a woman on the phone and then somebody from the UK calls me. It was Kayla Meox. I mean, you could be pronouncing Irish or be pronounced like you can't stutter. He's stalking me. He takes pictures of my mother, my father on his Facebook page and he has like this skull with a hat with a gavel on it. All this shit I've been through with people lying on me. You know how scary that fucking looks and then you go walk outside you got all these people following and lying on you because of this piece of shit. You line and say, Kayleen. Now look, why why are you calling me Kayleen and then now do what Harold and his friends did? You make a fake Facebook page of me. Bloods, the one that said they was going to have me murdered for years. And you do what they did. You a gang stalker. Your followers need to know what kind of person you are. Look at all your damn fans. Half of them on medication because people like your ass. Those cars aren't following you. All them people that's wearing the same colors coughing at you, looking at their phone. Is that David? Yeah, it is. David. No, it's not. That's not me. Crazy and seeing things. They're nothing but just names. That That's not you. You didn't make that page. Wave of Instagram pages are trying to make me connected to and basically trying to insinuate that I'm a bomb or so there's a bomb somewhere. Like, what is that for? These are mental tactics to make you unsteady. You send a swarm of people to make a innocent person apologize to you so you can whoop whatever you want to say to them. You can just whoop them and they'll be so broken down. There. So Rick Starr was supposed to be my friend, but it turns out he was actually friends with Mario and the guy um, that was trying to jump me and that was stalking me around BJ Rooster. Me and Rick Starr are not lovers. We don't date. We were never a couple. He threw my stuff out because... I don't like his friends. That's why he threw my stuff out. We were friends and we was great and all getting along. And all of a sudden now you don't like me because Mario and Harold told you not to. And you throw all my property outside of your house. He was on the phone with me when I called about them jumping me at BJ Roosters. I called Rick. I called a lawyer, a very prominent lawyer in the city of Atlanta. And I also called my boyfriend, the guy I love dating. That everyone knew I was around all the time. Y'all used to see him, me, him and I everywhere together. I'm not interested in dating tops because I'm a top. So, there you go. We weren't dating. We weren't lovers. This is one of the mean girls who threw my stuff out that was friends with Harold Toriano Graves. Now, Rick pretended to be my friend from 2017 all the way to 2021 when he threw my belongings out. And I asked, where my stuff at? Now, Rick, you care about your reputation so much. Either you're going to continue to not say nothing or you can upload a picture of a text message of you pretending like you don't know where my stuff is at. That's either or. I don't have it no more. You knew you had my stuff and everything. Yeah, I, don't have this I mean, shit, shit my mail was actually coming to his house and stuff. And he turned around and took all my belongings and threw it out. Why? Because to be loyal to some people that did not like me, but you pretended to be fake in front of my face. I had over five thousand dollars worth of profit. Y'all know I love making music. He threw out my speakers. He threw out my computer. He threw out my expensive Bluebird microphone. Y'all, I asked him, "Why did you throw out my stuff, man?" And he said, "What stuff?" He acted like I was delusional and crazy, and that there was nothing I was keeping at his house. I was keeping them. You probably you still have my gas mask, my pink gas mask, is at your place. Outside of damaging my property that I kept at your place. Uh, you stole some of my property also. You have made no attempts to give it back to me. All you continue to do is gaslight and say you ain't got it. You got pictures of stuff that's not supposed to be there that's mine. Now, my boyfriend drew a picture of these blue aliens, and for some reason, it's at your house. And it's inside that place where all them damn snacks is at. Because you guys don't have the shit I've been through. I'm just, like, gently scraping the surface. There's some dark shit that happened up in there. So it was May the 9th, and I was roofied. I remember I got a private dance, and then I went to the bathroom, and I passed the fuck out. It was a dancer named Polo, shout out to Carlos, that uh, actually helped me. He said he got me from the bathroom, took me inside the locker room. After the locker room, he said that he had to go do his rotation. The rotations are normally between like 16 to 24 minutes. And he said that he got down and came back in the locker room. He said I was on the fucking floor. Just on the floor. And he said no one cared. He said everybody would just continue to go on for the night. He thought it was strange. That fucking asshole at the front door could have called the police. He could have called my emergency contact, but he ain't do shit. He left me and that bitch fucking two hours on the goddamn floor for what? To make a joke out of me?
Pastor Lisa Fan told me that, look here, you had a whole meeting basically talking shit about how you need to watch your drink because that can happen to you. I could have fucking died. I could have died on that fucking floor. This nigga just passed out. Really? Money would make your ass. So jealous, you would sit there and let a person sit there, knowing they unconscious. You, the thing that made me realize that it was not a customer, and it may have been that goddamn bar, was when the bartenders was telling my customers there was supposed to be a fight tonight between Tommy and the dancer. I don't watch that dude at the front door pull dancers to the side, manipulate them, walking past me, smacking his goddamn hand. Little fucking crackhead at work the goddamn door. So I'm do something to me. Man, I wanna hit a Wonder Woman spin on the niggas. <laughs> but outside of that, I got too much going on to be fighting some motherfuckers. When he found out how much money I made, it made him angry. It's like he couldn't understand why a nigga making more money than him. Seriously. Ugh, all money is not good money, I'll tell you that much. Where you get your money from, boy, you love. It ain't about where you get your money from, it's about you. You can get that money anywhere else. I had me an envelope full of money on me, right? And he said that after he left me back there and came back, the envelope was gone. And he went and told the motherfucker the goddamn front door what happened, right? So he sit there and he tells him, oh, they sold Tommy money. He had an envelope full of money on him. What did you take? Uh, I, don't do, I don't do drugs. There's something. Huh? The motherfucker at the front door said, who? Oh, that guy? He's a piece of shit. With me? Yeah, but he wanted it. Okay. Piece of shit. Let me file this complaint. Really? So I'm a piece of shit. How? How am I a piece of shit? I've been nice but like to everybody. Everybody sit there and just leave any fucking nasty fucking thing. Yo, fucking crackhead ass makeup. There was another dancer back there that had a customer back there with him. He told me that he threw a sheet over me. He threw his cold coat over me to cover me. Your front door, he's a mass manipulator. Manipulated into to pit each other against each other. Both of them gone. Now, the first other one left before the other one did. The one that helped me. He was telling me, why are they being mean to me? Everybody act like they don't like me. I told him, flat the fuck out. They don't like you because you helped me. You weren't supposed to help me. I was supposed to be embarrassed. And Pierre, please say the gunman used an AR-15 rifle. Then no one cared, so I won't come back. I told him, you need to stop talking to me, and you need to leave me alone if you want them to leave you alone. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. But at the same time, that's the difference between being a fucking follower and being a leader. They had two leaders in that bitch. Everybody else was following. They all they act the same. You talk to me, you have a conversation with a whole lot of salience. Then niggas, not the same. Not the same. Hell no. Nah. Carlos, me and Carlos are almost a goddamn same. They can't stand some motherfucker. They can't sit there and manipulate in control. So they got rid of him. They got rid of him. The only person that helped me. And then that's when it started all the way back up the harassment and everything. Because you had somebody that's going to be like, no, 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 no. Because the thing is, they like to gaslight people. Which means they sit up there and tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. You drug me. I didn't. Okay. That's not right. <sighs> Trying to make it seem like you're crazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm advising everybody of color, do not go back there. Do not go to that place. You respect yourself. Fuck, fuck Tommy. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy. Yep. Jay would like to talk to human resources. Word. Yeah, you want to file a complaint against freedom? Yeah. For drug I need to get the goddamn front door. Write that shit out. He writes that shit out. He writes that shit out, okay? Slave masters have children too, for the people that go there and want to have a conversation with me about everything else. Don't fucking go to that place. Don't support that place. Don't fucking do anything that's going to uplift that motherfucker at all. That place needs to be shut down, condemned, and burned to the goddamn ground. I will burn this place, though.